Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching today. So today we have day five of 15 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. And today's topic, we're going to be uh, talking about the eight goal category. So very important. Well, everything in this book is very important to your bit uh, to your business and how to grow and how to be successful and how to be a millionaire real estate agent. But again, as I did the last several days, I kind of preface this is that success and goals is all relative to what you want your goals to be. Money, sales, success is all relative to where you set the bar up for yourself. So I'm going to go through these categories. If you have the book, great. I know some a couple of Agents text message me and email me saying they're going to get the book. That's great. Good book to have. <clears throat> Keep on the shelf. I did. I read it many, many years ago and brought it up. Uh, and also, there's I'm, what I'm not going to be mentioning too much because I don't have that much time over the next several days. There's lots of great quotes, lots of great things in the book. And actually, putting a shout out to some agents that are in the Cleveland, Northeast Ohio area from. From Keller Williams. So Gary in his book actually quotes great successful agents uh, and teams here in Northeast Ohio. So, so look at that. It's great information there. So I'm going to go through each one of these categories. But remember, in these categories, Gary talks about how each category is like a folder uh, because you have to have goals for each category. I know we all have general goals, like it's all in one big you know, file folder of what you want to or in your mind or in a spreadsheet of what your goals are. But Gary kind of explains that you should patch these up, excuse me, <clears throat> into different categories. So you should make see if you're re reaching your goals in each category. So you know that uh, you're not, you're looking at your overall goals that you have to have everything in order for all of these categories to be successful. That it's great if you do, but make sure each one of these is kind of separated. So, and then also they're also spread out between days and weeks and months and years and career goals. So we're going to go through each of these. Excuse me, take a sip of my water here. We're going to go through each of these. Uh, and please, if you got a pen, write these down, make a note of them and try to get these organized over the next few days or hours or, or weeks so you can start working on these individually. So one is, of course, lead generation is very important, the most important thing out there. Um, and you have to track every lead, every lead. Uh, and leads don't need to be actual ones that turn into buyers and turn into sellers. Those are hot, medium, cold leads. Someone that you know that I always say, and a lot of my agents have heard me say that, every single person you talk to is a potential client. They're just start cold. That person you run into today, talk to today, meet at an event, someone introduces you to a friend of a friend, whatever those, every single person you meet could be or potential client because they're going to be living somewhere. They're going to move somewhere. They're going to, uh, depending upon their where they are in life, their age or their business or their family, they might buy seven more houses in their year. They might buy two more houses. They might only buy one more house for the rest of their life. So every potential person is that you meet or get in contact with is a potential client. It's just how much effort and organization, are you going to put in connecting with them, staying in, uh, in touch with them? And are they a, uh, a very, very cold lead, mildly cold lead, warm, hot, every single person? That's the beauty of real estate, the beauty of sales, that every person you meet is a potential client, no matter where they live. Because remember this, I've said this many times, you are a licensed real estate agent that means that you could earn a referral fee from anywhere, anybody buying a house anywhere in the country or world. We have agents that are referring business to other countries. So we get that uh, several referrals every year out and in to other countries. So when you have a license, don't think small. 
Don't think just who you're going to put in your car or meet at a house or what listing you're going to take. Think about anybody and everybody that's anywhere in pretty much the whole world. But uh, so everybody you could possibly meet is there is a potential lead, is a potential customer. So lead generation doesn't mean exactly buyer because so every single person in your contact in your database is a potential is a lead it's really to me personally it's a lead they're going to buy a house either why for some reason a lot of agents think a lead is someone who's going to buy a house right now uh, a month from now it's a week from now as soon as they find a house but what's the difference between someone says i'm gonna uh, they're gonna buy a house five years from now it's just putting them on a timeline and guess what if you you're working now and generating those leads and you're uh, quartiling them in different times like hey this these people are going to probably buy within the next three to five years three to five years you keep on me putting people in the three to five years program then guess what three years from now oh my gosh how many leads do you have there are people that are looking three to five years now three years from now is today all those people that you would have talked to three years ago that are looking from three to five years from now Will probably would be right here. You'd have all of this business if you just started thinking that way. So lead generation, put that in a category, put that in a file, put that in in a, a file folder on your desktop. Some in some way you have to keep organized with your goals for leads. How many people you're going to talk to? How many leads are you going to get that are hot, warm, cold? However you want to organize them, you have to track them. And, and and make sure you're hitting your goals. Like example, I wanna uh, put every week, I wanna put a minimum of 10 new leads in my system of they're looking in the next year, looking the next month, looking the next three to five years. You're putting someone in a, in a, in a database and keeping it organized and tracking it. So category two is the listings. Again, yesterday I said list, kind of the old philosophy is still new, it's still good today, list or die. You want to have a goal of a number of listings and talking to and trying to get in touch with sellers. And again, it's very similar to talking with people. You're going to, if you're networking and talking to people, you're going to find enough people selling their house. So you have to have a goal for a number of listings. Two a month, three a month, ten a month, whatever your goal is per for listings, and I know now in today's market, it is a little tougher for lead, uh, listings because the uh, inventory is shorter, smaller. But I get that all the time with agents. Like it's harder today. It's there's always people selling and there's always people buying. So no matter where the market is, if there's a lot of people in the market or not so many people in the market, it's just a smaller amount of people. But there's still enough for everybody to get real estate. Even in this tr tragic thing, things happening in the world with COVID and, and quarantines that happened and, and uh, we thought the sky was falling at the beginning with, with a lot of things, but real estate kept moving. We, uh, again, my opinion, we, you ever hear the term stress tests, stress tests in business to see, like example, see if uh, employees can handle a certain number of business, see whatever, you know, you're really trying to gauge if you could handle certain things. Real estate was put through a stress test of what will happen during a pandemic and people aren't in the, can't um, get out of their house or don't want to buy or uh, unemployment, whatever. We were just put through and continue we are put it through a stress test of the economy and real estate and we're doing well. My opinion, we're doing very well, much better than I thought we would, and we're doing great. And I think we're going to continue to do even better as real estate. So, but there's still a piece, no matter how everything slowed down. I talked to my broker friends that are in New York and other states where they were totally shut down. They couldn't show houses and for months, and there's no uh, closings for weeks or months. They are still moving forward, but not as fast as we were. But there was still a piece of the pie that agents were out there getting. Because there's always going to be people that need to buy and sell in any kind of economy. So sorry, I went off tangent there on listings. So make sure you have your listing goals, track them, and make sure you're hitting those daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, three, uh, contracts written. So you know and especially a lot of us know right now contracts written to contracts closed is 
uh, the percentage is a, a lot different today than it could have been in a market where there's not as many multiple offers. So I have agents right now, and I'm telling the newer agents, the agents that uh, just starting to get busy, that this you know market is not like it is all the time. I have agents going, they have buyers that are on their sixth or seventh house that they've written offers on, lost out to multiple offers on. They're showing them 40, you know, 30, 40 houses over months because they keep on missing out on opportunities. They're, all of that work, they're basically wrote contracts on five, six, seven properties. So have a goal for how many contracts you want to write because it's still moving forward. Even though they're not getting accepted, you're in the right direction and hopefully those buyers will find a house. Hopefully those buyers will stick with you and eventually buy. So have a goal for how many contracts you want to write in a week, a month, a year, uh, and keep track of that. Uh, number four, contracts close. So that again, like I was saying, that is, a, there's, I feel in my experience of watching the pending or the contracts written and pendings coming in and things today, it's further than it usually normally is, which means that we're writing a lot more contracts than close. We're writing a lot more contracts because of, uh, uh, multiple offers falling through or, you know, not getting uh, the offers accepted, uh, inspections, uh, appraisals. There's issues kind of going in that are making some buyer's agent writing a lot more contracts than getting accepted than normal. So if you're new to the industry, new within the last few year or less year or so, this is definitely a lot, not a lot normal. Uh, with the amount that it is, because I'm getting some agents that are getting very, very discouraged. Like, oh my gosh, I have to go through this my rest of my career, like writing six, seven offers, and my buyers missing out on houses and trying to jump in there and the first offer and going way over asking price. That's not normal, but this is the market that we're in now. So, number four again, contracts close. Make sure you have a goal on how many deals you want to close each month, each year. Uh, and and you got to track that and make sure you're hitting that. So again, categories. You're putting all these in categories to see if you hit these goals. Number five, of course, uh, is money. Make sure you're making the money that you want. And again, this is something you have to put ahead because we're, you, know, if you put the money goal now. If you're not hitting that goal now, of course, it's going to take you some time to get there. So put that money goal in. And there's kind of group, uh, four things in here. There's gross income. There's uh, net income, there's your expenses, and and any referrals or compensation you're paying out to buyers agents or anybody else because if you have too much, too many transactions or too, uh, too many customers or buyers and you have to delegate to other people, keeping track of that. So, gross income. Of course, you want to have a gross income of what you want to make. Uh, uh, to net income is really what you're you're clearing at the end of the year. So there's so many times every year when we send out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 1099s at the beginning of every year, and we get dozens and dozens and dozens of calls and emails back. Goes is this right? Because sometimes they, you don't realize how much money you make as you're not tracking it, and we're not you know some agents are not making quarterly payments on their taxes or just waiting to ta the taxes are due. And when you just get a check and you don't track it, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I made that much money. Now that much might not be as much as you want, but it's more than you, you thought <laughs> because those checks come in every month or every couple of weeks or when as often as you can. But then you got to go back and check if your net's there and how much money you're spending in real estate, how much money you're spending on advertising, how much money you're spending in your car and gas and your cell phone bill, anything that's business related on what you're spending and making sure you're tracking that monthly, quarterly, yearly on that. I suggest quarterly at a minimum so you're not at that tax point uh, at the, the next year going, oh, now it's being 1099, I got to pay all this taxes. So that sets you back sometimes. So, so please keep track of that income, keep, get a good, uh, accountant and quarterly, you should be reviewing it and see if there's any estimated quarterly payments that you have to make for taxes. So you don't hit that, hit that thing. Cause I've actually seen agents that when taxes are due, they didn't 
have their uh, do quarterly uh, uh, estimates. They weren't prepared for it. And then, then they're playing catch up on their taxes with all the commission checks that are coming in now to, to pay for the taxes from last year. And they're always paying catch up. So watch, watch for that. And then agent compensation. The good news is if you are, um, I have agents that are referring business to other agents all of the time because they have buyers or sellers of this side of town or another city, state, and keep track of what you're giving up to other places. And if you're doing enough business in a certain area, you might want to pick one agent. I have a few agents like that right now that they keep on referring to the same place or same area because they have a sphere of influence in that area. And they were just giving we're referring transactions to them. But if you have enough transactions to a specific agent, that agent or that area, that agent could become like more of a buyer referral, a buyer agent from you. And then you could negotiate that commission split. So if you're normally example on a, you're giving someone a 30 or you're taking only a 25 or 20, 25, 30% referral fee on stuff you're giving to people, but you look back and go, wow, I referred out to this one agent or one area of agents, you know, X amount of dollars. And, you know, if I pick one buyer's agent, I could probably renegotiate that as a 50 50 split and a higher split to you because you're referring enough business to the same agent, same area. So think of that too, because you could renegotiate with agents. There's no exact, well, at least with our office, I'm sorry, explain. Uh, there I might be uh, agents with other offices and other companies that have strict policies on referrals and how much you could, you could get paid. Uh, in our office, to all of our agents, that's negotiable, negotiable to the other agent and how good that lead is, how if you have a buyer that knows exactly what house they want to go see and buy the first house or if it's a listing that's going to sell in a day, it's not always have to be only a small referral fee to you because of that. So keep track of your money is number five. Six, people. Um, if you kind of what I was just saying, keep track of people. Uh, if you're looking to uh, hire buyer's agents or refer to buyer's agents, I mean, you don't have to hire a buyer's agent. I'm just talking about the start kind of baby steps. You get enough referrals or enough leads where you can't handle all of them to yourself, all the buyers, all the uh, you know listings, a listing on the other side of town or another city that you don't want to drive to and you don't want to uh, service that listing because it's too far from you or not your uh, area of expertise. Uh, so keep track of, of agents uh, and people that you need to refer business to. Uh, also use the uh, your office or our office, especially for our agents, will help you refer and uh, to agents and give you a list of agents in a certain area. So, so start categorizing and put in a category goal of agents. So I have a few agents out there each year that I help get a category like, hey, Tony, I have age, I'm in, uh, you know, mentor and I have a uh, sphere of people and uh, leads that come out of Elyria. I'm not driving to Lorraine and Elyria for listings and that, but give me a list of agents in that area. So it just make a mental note and or put a, uh, have a list of agents that they can refer to on that. Or I have some agents that we have agents of Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, I have agents referring business to, you know, two, three hours away in Ohio, and ha they have a list of all of our agents in Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, uh, our agents in Columbus have a, a list of agents in Cleveland. And that's why in, in our office, when we uh, try to share at least once a month, once every other month, our roster with all of our uh, updated uh, roster, because it changes all of the time, because we have new agents coming in all the time uh, with agents, their license number, their uh, and the city they live in. That's why we do it, so agents could get an idea and in interview. We give it. We so all of our Central Twenty Home Star agents out there. We uh, let our agents when they refer business to other agents. We give them a list of agents in, in that area and let them interview those agents to find the best pick for them. We don't place them like you go through this person or that person. Here's a list of agents in the in that service area that you're looking. Please feel free to email them or call them or text them and interview all of these agents and see what's the best fit for you. So we leave that up to the agents there. So keep track of people. And then if you get to that point where your business is so great and you do have an assistant or you have a, a transaction coordinator or an actual buyer's agent that works underneath you all the time, that's great. There's a whole nother level that I could go on for hours on how to have goals. So if you someday 
just to give you an idea, if you someday you want to have your own team and you're the team leader and you're the rainmaker, you're bringing in the leads, and then you want to have goals for your buyer's agents on how many leads they're working on all the time, how many deals they're writing exactly, like kind of subcategory of everything else I just was going over that of contracts closed, listings that they get, referrals that they get, uh, and kind of like putting that there and really coaching your team with the same categories that we are going over now. But again, I don't want to go into too much detail there because I want to stress on the agents that are going to be building to that point too. But in the book, it's great. So if you're ready for a team, lots of great information in this book there. Uh, that was six. Seven is system and tools. So make sure you have, before you get, it's always kind of like putting the systems in place. So some, when you're ready for all of that business, it's always great to, you know, all of these things that we're talking about is great to have in place before you get to that level. So when you're there, you're not scrambling to find, find, you know, to be organized with your leads, organized with your money, organized with people, organized with all of that. It's good to have all the systems in place so when you're ready, you're ready. And the, the thing is systems and tools. Figure out what um, transaction management com or system you want to use, what lead generation or lead management system, what email system do you want to use, what you're going to be sending out mass emails uh, to your sphere, uh, to your database, what system are you gonna use? Uh, what's easiest for you? So start testing now, start using something. And the one thing, two things, most important, most important. One, make sure it's very, very cost effective to you. That's most important. The most expensive doesn't mean the best. There's free ones out there through your office, through your company, through us at Century One that you could use that's free. You shouldn't spend money on this. Is there's free systems and tools for you to use to keep everything organized and marketing and all that. You shouldn't have to spend any money. And two, make sure it's easy to export all of that information in uh, your contacts in CSV form. It's, it's, so if you need help with that, like the little small technical part of it, because I've had agents in the past, which I don't know of any right now systems, but in the past there were systems that you, it's hard to export and then agents couldn't get all their notes and could not and they're trying to change systems and it's a big hassle so make sure it's easy exportable if you ever want to change systems on that and then last today sorry i'm going to take a sip of water here um last today is education and personal growth so have a category like like this book maybe have one book a year a month quarter, something in real estate, something in success, business, motivation, some type of personal growth, take a class. To all my Century 21 agents, there's lots of great classes on the Century 21 University live and, and recorded classes. There's, there's programs on there for four weeks, eight weeks, quarterly, you know, many programs on how to better your business coaching with myself and so any agents out there uh, maybe set up coaching with your team leader or your your broker or your manager once a week once a month something have a personal growth uh, category of what you're going to do to better yourself you know just in education in some type of education or coaching and again for free or at least at, at the minimum uh, cost of a book. You don't have to spend a thousand dollars a month on a, a real estate coach. You could, if you have the money, uh, and you want to spend that money. There's great real estate coaches out there. There's Tom Ferry, Mike Ferry. There's Jared James. There's uh, Brian Buffini. There's lots of coaches and coaching programs that they coach a lot of agents all over the you know, all over the country. But a lot of this is in, is, is uh, available for free. A lot of their information on YouTube and in their websites or just ask your office or your broker or your manager team leader something so some type of personal growth always have a goal and a category for that so that's it for today those are the eight categories of a millionaire uh, the mindset of a millionaire real estate agent by gary keller so uh, that is day five so monday 
We'll have day six, and that category is how to earn a million dollars, just the basic start of the concept of things that you can do. And that's it. Have a wonderful day. It is Friday. If you're watching this day, have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.